year was 1808. Our nation was only two decades old, and Thomas Jefferson was our second president. It was then that Robert J. Murray's vision became reality. The opening of what would soon become Landman and Kemp at 313 Pearl Street in New York City, a multi-purpose toilet water called Florida Water, still our benchmark product today, was introduced. The rest, they say, is history. Murray's importance and influence in this growing city was such that the Murray Hill section was named after him and his family, a legacy that lives on today. Several years after Robert Murray retired from his forward moving business and Brother Lindley took over, the company published the first edition of Bristol's Almanac. This 36-page book, containing a daily calendar, weather prognostications, church days, reading matter, and advertisements, is still published today, with some three million copies distributed each year. In 1835, David T. Landman, a direct descendant of John and Priscilla Alden, Plymouth Colony settlers, and great-grandson of Colonial Connecticut Governor John Trumbull, teamed with Lindley Murray to make their burgeoning company even more dynamic. Eighteen years later, the company as we know it took shape. The growing enterprise changed its name to David T. Landman and Company, and George Kemp, a young Irish immigrant, joined the firm. Our United States was soon to become a nation divided, roiled by bitter disputes over the issue of slavery. In 1855, a legacy for Murray and Landman was to begin when famed illustrator author George de Maurier designed a label for Florida water. De Maurier's design is still used today. During this time, innovations flourished worldwide. Meanwhile, George Kemp's role was signified by yet another name change as the thriving business becomes D.T. Landman and Kemp. Civil War engulfed our nation. But while the war raged, our company extended its reach around the world. D.T. Landman & Kemp was renamed Landman & Kemp, began trade with China, India, and the Malay States. The East Indies, Australia, and Africa soon followed. Its commerce in Europe already established. Landman & Kemp products become available worldwide. A year later, Landman & Kemp opened its first foreign factory in Havana, Cuba. The company's international stature was apparent, with 12 subsidiaries in Canada, Mexico, and South America. The Civil War ended after four years of bloody conflict and 600,000 casualties, as Americans tried to pick up their lives with a spirit of optimism. Landman and Kemp reformulated and reintroduced Barry's Tricophorus hair tonic to the marketplace. Dusting itself off from the Civil War, America's prosperity and ingenuity emerged. And Landman and Kemp relocated to New York City's first ever steel building at 68 William Street. Chester A. Arthur is president of an energetic and buoyant nation. Industry boom and apparent spending by the wealthy coined the phrase, the Gilded Age. Landman and Kemp moved to 135 Water Street, New York. The Spanish-American War was well underway, while Landman and Kemp began using its unique private revenue stamp on product labels. In 1908, Landman and Kemp celebrates 100 years of making scents and toiletries for the world. In 1917, the United States entered World War I. Landman and Kemp supported our war effort, supplying free Florida water to our doughboys overseas. It's the Roaring Twenties, Flappers, Bathtub Gin, and the Charleston. Landman and Kemp became incorporated by the laws of the state of New York. A year later, the company introduced Reuters soap to the world. In 1929, the New York stock market crash 
left worldwide financial repercussions. But Landman and Kemp business, national and international, remained robust. Barclay and Company joined Landman and Kemp in 1931, prompting a name change to Landman and Kemp Barclay and Company. World War II left its mark as our nation supported the military. Again, Landman and Kemp Barclay and Company supplied Florida water to American troops. America's teens are rocking round the clock. President Dwight D. Eisenhower was at the nation's helm as the Cold War with the Soviet Union accelerated. Russia's launch of Sputnik, the first space satellite, prompted a new emphasis on science in America's schools. Landman and Kemp Barclay and Company once again moved its headquarters to 15 Grand Avenue, Palisades Park, New Jersey to make room for an ever-growing company. Ceasefire ended the U.S. involvement in the Vietnam War. Skylab, America's first space station, was launched. Landman and Kemp Barclay and Company moved to its current headquarters at 25 Woodland Avenue in Westwood, New Jersey. The company's line of products grew throughout the decade. Two years into the new millennium, Landman and Kemp Barclay and Company expanded its product line with oatmeal soap and aloe vera soap, followed by rue soap in 2003. Following the tradition established in World Wars I and II, Landman and Kemp Barclay and Company sent free Florida water to cool and refresh our troops in Iraq. And now, we've reached the end of our walk through history, but certainly not the end of our story. Just as our nation continues to move, grow, and prosper, so will Landman and Kemp Barclay and Company continue creating classic sense for classic moments long into its third century and beyond.